Hello and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're looking at Incredipede by Colin and Sarah Northway. This is an absolutely beautiful game that celebrates the diversity of life by allowing you to customize and create your own creature to basically get through all these crazy environments, uh, which there are I believe 60 setup levels for you to try and then there's a level editor which is going to allow you to make your own of course uh, and try other people's as well. Uh, this is one of those games that is on green light, and from what I've seen of the trailer, it looks outstanding, and I'm actually, I'm really psyched to play this one. Uh, it's one of the few games, and I get this occasionally when I'm really psyched to try one, uh, it's almost like it's hard for me to want to even start the game up, because I feel like my expectations are really high, and I don't want to, like, not do the game justice when I'm describing what it's about. Uh, but I have to say, the first most stunning thing, the art style, absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's set in a, like, a woodblock print style, which I'm not sure I've seen any other games use exactly like this. Uh, and you can see it's even got little subtle details like this pastel wash going over it. I mean, it's it's really refined and really classy looking and, and just really elegant as well. Uh, so let's start it up. I actually need to very quickly clear my data, because I did a quick uh, test recording. So let's... oh, it still says continue. Well, hopefully it'll show the intro, so I'll be quiet now. Okay, so we assume the role of Quozel, I believe that's how you say it, and we need to be brave and clever to get to the distant village and save my sisters. So we're presented with a, looks like a sort of a Super Meat Boy style or Super Mario World style world map, and we're going to look for, I guess, fruit while we're also traversing these environments. Again, love the art style here. Uh, there's actually a little collection down at the bottom so you can see how many we've gotten of each type of fruit. I believe that it said there were three worlds, so they're split up like that. Uh, and let's just start it up. Uh, so I have to say that there are a couple of influences that I, I believe would be apt to point out here, and I'm pretty sure this isn't a surprise to anyone, but uh, the ones that I immediately think of are Spore, World of Goo, and Triarachnid. So let's use our keys here, A and D, and we can do a little bit of swimming. Uh, obviously, well, it's a little bit creepy, actually, the, the muscles being exposed like that on the outside of this creature. It's definitely not a, a very orthodox creature that we've ever seen before. But we are able to mimic some of these creations that we've seen on Earth by later assembling bits and parts onto this creature. And uh, notice these really nice little details, like the grass is actually splitting, and the eye is actually making sort of emotive responses as it's smacking into the ground and stuff. It's really nice to, uh, little touches like that that make me really appreciate it all. So we've got the first of the many different fruit we need to collect. Uh, I beat the beginning in 40... well, I wasn't really trying very hard. We, we used two legs and one muscle. We're gonna go as far as probably most of the first world here, depending on how far we get in the tutorializing. I do want to get to a point where we get to sort of build and, and mold a creature a little bit, so I can show that off. Uh, if I fail, hit restart to try again. Fair enough. And we've just got our options menu here. I should probably... Well, you saw this just briefly, but, you know, full screen graphics, contact. And we've got a whole bunch of graphical options. All the menus are very well, like, very cohesive, and the little hits of color. I mean, it's got a great color palette through it all. Uh, sort of looks like it's got that... A little bit of that wash to it. Uh, like a sepia feel. 
Yeah, see? <laughs> that was set up for me to fail immediately so I could then be stuck and have to restart. That's okay, though. So we're going to try this a little bit differently, maybe pivot off of this rock. Oh, in a way that is not going to get me stuck, but I've already failed again. How is the best way to deal with this? Can I, like, maybe lift up just a little bit, let the rock out? I'm not sure that's going to be possible, and maybe... Maybe I could, like, roll this rock right under me. Probably just move my mouse cursor out of the way here, it's not really necessary at this point. There we go, I'll use the rock to, like, ride over top or something. There we go, pivot. Perfect. Definitely an awkward way to move around, uh, but that's only gonna last for so long. I, I feel kind of bad for it, crawling like that. And that's really a, a, a staple of good character design, if you can feel something for a character with basically no knowledge of it, other than just being able to look at it and that there was that little bit of a backstory. Inching away, and, and notice, of course, these roots and stuff are all swaying in the wind, as is the grass. So again, lots and lots of really nice details. Um, I'm actually, I'm inching in the wrong direction here, so I've got to kind of reverse that pivot. Oh, I can actually kind of stand. There we go. And so this is giving us a little bit of a background as to how we can best maximize uh, the physics and this creature's abilities and, and how we can actually get quite a bit out of just the ability to slide like that. I just knock that little cactus thing right down. Alright, so far so good. Still collecting cherries. I'm actually very curious to see the level editor now that I see the detail that's involved. Okay, so we can actually roll and then use the the leg as a like a pivot point to roll and then flatten to stabilize ourselves. I wasn't actually expecting it to work that way. Alright, that was an easy one. Got ourselves a Granny Smith apple, which is great. Make a, a lovely tart apple pie or something out of that, who knows. Uh, click on pink bulges to add muscles. Alright, we can do this. And then what, we gotta click where we want to attach them to, obviously, so we can attach them top or bottom. Uh, and then see the effects of such a thing as we start the game. Actually not sure how much I really needed to add a muscle there, but uh, actually probably would have been better off adding it to the top part here. Maybe we could make a pivot point. Oh, look at that, and then it actually will show us, um, Tory Bash style, what the next motions will look like. Oh, so that's a really interesting movement pattern right there. So it's actually creating sort of emergent physics movement patterns, or I should say physics-based. And we can kind of creep along, maybe, tripod style or something. Oh, this is going to be kind of awkward like this. Like a spastic dance we're doing. I think it'll actually work, but it's definitely not ideal. Um, so obviously I was just playing around there, I wasn't exactly strategizing yet. And uh, I, I do want to address something that's been uh, brought up to me a couple times in the past, that maybe I should do some of these videos after having recorded a bit, and played these games a little bit so I know what I'm getting into better, but I have to say the way I'm doing it right now, I feel like we're, we're really doing the right thing doing first impressions. That's really what I was here to do, or what I wanted to do anyway. So if I took my time and I recorded these, they wouldn't be first impressions anymore, you know, talking a second time over them. Um, not a big deal or anything, I just wanted to say, like, uh, those of you who have said that that's a good idea, like, yeah, I mean, for certain games where I need to concentrate a lot, then maybe that does make sense. But for something like this, I want to experience it with you guys for the first time. I mean, granted, I did watch a trailer, but I didn't have very much of the game spoiled by that. So, muscles with, uh, what is this, uh, counter, or clockwise... Move opposite to those with a counterclockwise, okay. So I do want to keep that in mind as I'm designing muscles. This should be interesting, I want to see what will happen with this. So I can use this to kind of crawl right through the bottom part, and then maybe if I go in reverse, I might be able to stand up a little bit. Oh, hello. Actually, it looks like it's going to go pretty much the same way in both directions. Interested to see, yeah, what will happen when I really stress those muscles. Okay, I'm going to probably have to go down and knock over that cactus or something. Oh, that's one way to do it. 
And of course a game like this is, is really a great idea just because it has so much emergence to it. I mean, there's so many different ways to solve each level, there's so many different combinations. Oh boy, this is strange looking. Uh, and you can really customize this, and once you get a really good handle on how the physics all work and how the, the building of the creatures work, uh, you should be able to create some very interesting dynamics. I have no idea what I'm doing here still, I'm just clicking on stuff. I just want to see, like, how strange I can make a creation as all of these limbs start bending in and out of each other. Can I reconnect that? Oh no, I can't. Alright, let's see what happens with this. Oh, that's a mess. Like a collapsing... I don't know, it doesn't look good though. <laughs> okay, and so that's what happens when we uh, fall down. And why do we fall? So we can get back up and, and twist and bend all our muscles in circles and apparently reach our goal. Certainly not the ideal way to do that either, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> And we can see replays, which is cool, and then there's solutions options for, I guess, when we get stuck later on. Let's just see what that does. Alright, so we can watch... ...pre-recorded replays, I guess. Just watch, let's see what happens. So you can see how to control the muscles better. I actually was thinking, based on the, the muscle thing, that there would be a whole, like, contract and ex uh, expand option, sort of like QWOP or QWOP, however you say it. Uh, but no, the controls are actually much simpler than I expected them to be. Uh, so I already solved this. Uh, I guess I'll just hurry my way to the exit again. Uh, I guess I've assumed control over the replay now, because that's not the way I had mine set up. That's fine. Alright, let's continue. Uh, go back. And let's go to... oh, okay, I guess I gotta go all the way out to the menu, get back in. And the music is really great as well, I mean, it really sets the tone very nicely. Uh, there's a very subtle ambience going on in most of the levels. Nothing intrusive, it's just, uh, you know, birds chirping and stuff, and then we get some nice tribal music. Sort of reminds me a little bit of Patapon. Oh, I should probably have put some muscles on that sucker. Um, which way is the proper way? I probably like that. No, I'm gonna just fall backward. Can I switch it? Yeah, I can actually. Oh boy. Alright, this could be interesting. Let's see. Am I gonna do this? Okay, I gotta use it sort of like a leg. Oh, or a support to stride forward each time. Now the muscle is actually relying on momentum to get you over this hump. And then you can actually use that to grab, and that's going to ratchet you forward so you can't fall in the wrong direction. So really, really clever, really smart puzzles and tutorializing. Um, I don't feel like I'm being talked down to in this tutorial, which is a really nice thing. A lot of games do that by accident, and I know it's not intentional most of the time. Uh, sometimes the developers tend to hold your hand a little bit more than you'd want, but in this game it's actually really quite necessary, and they do it in a, an elegant a uh, somewhat subtle way, as we just sort of learn all the different ways that these landscapes can present themselves. That looks like that crazy llama thing that's always in those animated GIFs. You know what I'm talking about. Move legs around with the bone foot. <laughs> it's honestly, it's still quite creepy having these crazy bones protruding from everything. Um, I don't have any muscles here that I... C oh, okay, I can move them right. Just said that. And I can stretch them as well, so that should make it pretty interesting. Uh, what kind of landscape are we dealing with here? Oh, really all I'm doing here is just trying to fall on this and not fall off the cliff, so this should be pretty simple. Alright, very good. This one's titled Be Smaller. I'm guessing we're probably going to learn we need to retract the size of these, yeah. Drag legs back to delete them. Drag them all the way back, yeah. There we go. Okay, we're quite small, let's delete another leg, I think we'll be fine with just the one. And we'll just roll like a, a leg of chicken or something. <laughs> 
Alright, that was a little awkward. Actually, I probably do need something to pivot off of. Or maybe just make this smaller. There we go. It was just knocked that cactus thing right down with me. It was really just trying to help. Providing a buffer zone. Build yourself. Okay, so we're probably getting to a point where we can actually have full range and customization now. So, click and drag away from the head to make new legs. Quite self-explanatory. Once you realize how you're deleting them, making new ones seems really quite obvious. And we really do have free reign here to make this however we like. So we want to actually probably go... No, actually I was probably right the first time. Let's go the other direction and let's go... like that. And then, <laughs> then we can dance around a little bit. Yay! Oh man, I'm going in the wrong direction. Okay, I think the, sl the angle that I started out on was not conducive to going... Yeah, the other way. So let's let's fix that a little bit. Uh, if we have one short leg and one long leg, I think that should help drag us forward like we were doing a little bit before. It's uh, very odd how those muscles can contort themselves, but they're doing the job. I can never tell if she's happy to be getting to the goal or if she looks like she's a little bit in pain. Maybe slow our fall. We don't want we don't want pain and we don't want to fall. So let's see what we can do about this. Um, this is like sort of a strange inchworm shape. And probably one of the more original ways I've seen this thing articulated so far. Uh, let's angle ourselves and then bend around all the edges, sort of like a bookworm or an inchworm, I mean, or a, you know, one of those lights that sticks to the top of your book. Let's do that again because I want to get the fruit. Very important we not pass those up. Alright, so far so good. Feels sort of like a caterpie or something. No, I missed. Well, thankfully there's no waiting time. I should also mention this is available not only for purchase already, uh, regardless of if it's going to be on Steam, but it is also available with a demo. And I'm going to put all the links, as I always do, on the description of this video. That did not work out. So this, I wouldn't say it's tough, but I'm kind of failing at it a little bit. So I would recommend to you guys, uh, you're going to want to play this one yourselves. I mean, definitely, if you've watched the video, I have a feeling you're going to have an opinion on it already, but uh, this is definitely something you need to experience to get the full breadth of what it is that we're doing here, because it's not exactly the type of game you've seen before, most likely. I mean, I did mention some of those influences, but still, this definitely does set itself apart in a lot of really good ways. And those are just my perceived influences, I'm not sure to what degree... The developer acknowledges them, I mean, probably has played most of them, if not all of them, but still. Alright, I'm really not doing well with this angle. Uh, well, I'm not gonna belabor this level for too much longer if I can't get this stupid cherry, thank you. Now fold, and roll, there we go. The music actually just started to pick up right around that point too, which is kind of good. Lava burns, so I guess we are... Yep, so we have some hazardous lava to deal with. That is a strange-looking creature right there. Uh, muscles with a clockwise have opposite those with a counterclockwise. But yeah, with... Yeah, move opposite. Well, we knew that already, but we need to strategically use those options somehow. Are we supposed to be driving like a little car? Is that... Is that the intent? Oh, I meant to go that way intended idea here. Now what is lava gonna do to me? Is this gonna burn me up? I guess not. Okay. Well, looks like she's a very durable little creature. Full control. Okay, I like the sound of that. So we've got pretty much everything it looks like. Click and drag bones to move legs, drag legs back to delete them. Got it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I could actually probably go with a pretty similar approach to what we just had a second ago. Let's just make something really ridiculous looking, because we can actually make bones uh, protruding from other bones, which you haven't seen done yet, but I am aware that we can do. Let's do something like that, and something like that, and something like that. This will definitely be strange, but it should work. Or maybe it won't, who knows. 
Wow, I feel like a really awkward giraffe or something. Giraffe rig. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Evolution would not favor this such creature, I don't believe, unfortunately. Uh, that would probably not be a good idea. Let's delete this protrusion. Now, to delete them, do we just... We drag them to the source, okay. I wasn't sure if it was back to the head or to the source of that spot. Uh, now, you can only make these protrusions go so far when they're coming from something else. There's actually a radius, a very uh, light, like, smoky-looking arc that you can use to decide uh, the maximum distance that you can create a leg at. This is so awkward. Alright, this creature is not gonna live for very long, I don't think. Let's do something about that. And this already might be a pretty big improvement. Oh, I gotta get the head up there, though, to get to that cherry, or it's not gonna work at all. Uh, this leg is essentially useless the way it is. Let's add one of these to it. That should help me bend up a little bit. Maybe. Maybe not. There's almost like a little bit of a spider movement to it, but it's not quite working. So I'm sure as you play this for a while, you're going to get a feel for what uh, looks and feels right as far as movement styles. Uh, let's do something a little bit more traditional, maybe, as I completely botch that idea. Uh, let's drag this down. So what's this going to do? Probably not much. Alright, looks like that will probably get me to the goal. Maybe not, actually. I do need something to lift me from underneath. Because uh, right now, that's not working out. So what if I do... Nope, wrong way. This way. If I do something like this on both sides... Ooh, that's not what I meant. And don't mind my being kind of awkward with this. It's actually pretty intuitive, uh, but as you've seen in pretty much every video, as I'm trying to talk and also uh, think about these things, it, it definitely makes it more complicated. So when you're playing this by yourself and not trying to narrate a video, you're going to have a much easier time. Oh, I didn't mean to click solutions. That's okay, though. Let's go back. I think we're almost done with the first world, right? Oh, we've got a few more levels. Maybe do one or two more. So here we go, so now it seems that we've got pretty much full control, we're a uh, snake-like, or inchworm-like creature this time. Uh, I do need some muscles though, or that's really not going to be very useful to me. So how can I leverage this position to be useful? I guess we could just sort of flop around and see what that does. So we'll do like a flop, and then a curl, and then a leap. It's a very acrobatic looking creation we've got going right now. Um, actually, if I do this right, that actually is a pretty effective way to get around. Although, down here, maybe not so much. So I wonder if there's, like, a specific type of creature, or a, spe a specific type of creation you can make that really does quite well with most any landscape type. So I guess you'll be looking for your creature of ideal forms as you proceed through this. I doubt there is one that will be able to handle everything, but there's probably one that is much better suited for a lot of environments than this. Uh, there we go. I just needed to sort of unravel myself over the edge of that. That worked well. Took a while, though. And then, of course, you can do the whole uh, time trials thing, essentially, once you get your handles down on, on exactly what you're doing, building uh, creatures you'll want to go for an optimal time. Alright, play with legs and muscles, things might not work the first time. Yeah, that's an understatement. They might not, they also might. Stuff's getting weird. Alright, so we'll keep that angled down. We'll throw one of these guys. Actually, let's not use... Sometimes not using a muscle is actually to your benefit. No, that's that's a bad idea. Because sometimes you need, like, a stable endpoint to work off of. 
Oh, almost. I'm really glad that we're starting out so simple. Like, these levels are really, really basic. Because, <laughs> like I said, it's intuitive, but you do have to get used to exactly what you're doing before you're going to make much progress, I think. Uh, but it seems like this is a good scaling uh, for the difficulty curve so far. High and hidden. Oh, does it keep... Oh, no, it's over. Oh, there's another one up there I gotta get to. Although, maybe I'll do that off-camera. So I don't wanna just be fiddling around with this creature for too long. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. Okay, so we've got, looks like, some hooking to do here. Um, this is gonna be a difficult one, I have a feeling. Uh, how do I need to do this? So this is gonna make me ratchet that whole thing around. Let's do maybe like this. I can probably flip around. Who knows, maybe I can catch the other side. Yeah, that's that okay, that was what I was trying to do in my head, but I wasn't sure if that would really be effective. Okay, cool. That actually does work pretty well. So then use that to pivot and grab it. Brilliant. That actually is probably the most elegant solution I've done so far. And all it took was what, one muscle. This creature is very adaptable. I love it. It'd be kind of funny if he could just be this little ball and just roll. <laughs> can also build like Well, I know that already. I've already been doing that for a while. What if I just do... Four legs. One on every side. Approximately equal length. I think I made the bottom one a little too short. Something like this. Can I just roll now? No, I guess I do need something to pivot off of. Um, so, can I do... Just throw these little guys on each corner. Uh, accidentally about to make a swastika here. I'm not meaning to do that. Uh, let's just do something like that. Let's see what this does. Whoa. I always end up going the wrong direction. There we go. This should actually work pretty well. Call this the starfish solution or something. To this lovely square melon. I've always wanted a square melon. No, no, you were almost there. Just, let's grab this thing. Although, I, I've actually probably made my own situation a lot harder now because I do need to touch that melon with my actual eye. Or my, you know, my body, my center point. And now I have all these protrusions coming off from every angle, which I'm going to deflect myself. So let's uh, delete one of these legs very quickly. Uh, and I should still be able to get around, although that did just restart me, which I didn't actually mean to do. Let's go... Can we go ahead? So I can hop along over the course of a few months here, and eventually make my way to that square melon. What a great idea, right? Grow watermelon in a box, and you've got a square watermelon. Like Minecraft, just stack them up, you could build a, uh, a fortress out of them. And then, you know, when times get tough, just eat your way out. Although, probably rot before long. Uh, so still, I wasn't really thinking ahead here, and I do need to get my body to be pivoted in the other direction, or this is not going to work. Yeah, this seems so easy, and it's it's quite difficult. Well, not difficult, but it's not as easy as I thought. Alright, so two legs gone. What's this going to do now that we're fairly symmetrical? I just want to be a little car. Can I? There we go. Grab, push, grab, push. And then it's going to reach this melon. And what's going to happen to the melon? I guess I'm just going to push it. Oh, I can push it into the goal and that should work just fine as well. Alright, so simple solution is actually more useful than the difficult one. So aside from that one, what was it, an apple here that I didn't get, I've gotten all of the fruit. No, there's two actually missing. What was the other one? There's another cherry somewhere that I didn't catch. Oh, I guess right here. Or no, these are these are saying I did get them. Was there two cherries on this one? No, it would be lit up then. Okay, so it does actually indicate that pretty well. So these are like bandages, I guess. Oh, there's another level. What am I doing? Okay. I thought that was the end. I'm dumb. 
Gatekeeper moves aside to let Quazzle through, or Quazzle. Oh, no, that was the end. So what have I earned? I've gotten some sort of a bonus hat, I guess. So now I need to earn whatever those are. Uh, some kind of moon rocks, or looks like spaceman helmets, and some kind of ancient artifact from Zuma. Uh, New World crystal, oh, they're crystal skulls, I suppose. Got it. Oh yeah, okay, I get it. Cause they, yeah, they're skulls for them. Not exactly traditional skulls as far as humanity is concerned. I love this owl right here. This is a very cool owl. And this is kind of creepy. Um, hazard a guess at what that might be, but I'm probably wrong. So it looks like there's quite a bit ahead of us here in the incredible world of Incredipede. And I'm actually very excited to see where we can go. Uh, I do want to very, very briefly look at this level editor and just see what we have at our disposal. Uh, okay, so we scroll in and out for that. There's our endpoints, this beam of light. And we can actually, I guess, shape various things out of this. Okay, cool. Just a click is really all we need here. Oh, cool. Okay, look at that. So it actually will grab and form up shapes based on these nuggets that you can make smaller or larger. That's actually quite brilliant. I really like that. Uh, very simple to use. And what is this? Oh, this is a block. I guess I haven't encountered these just yet. Now, if I drag one of these further away, though... Uh, how do I... Oh, is this really all the space I get for now? Or maybe I, oh, I can move the endpoint. Got it. All right, so I can actually make these as well, not as long as I want, but rather quite longer, uh, and then use all the space to better effect. And so when I delete it, just X that out, and then we can put like a rock in here. Now, what's this? We got a flame. I keep wanting to drag it out. Oh, that's our lava. Might not be super elegant looking if I just put this over top it, but maybe there's a way I can occlude that. Or maybe it'll sink to a, a level below after I'm done editing. Oh, it's like it's throwing uh, decorations on there for me as well, which I'm not sure I get why, but that's okay. So, yeah, uh, that seems to be pretty simple, actually. I guess there's... is there a limit to how many of these you can make? Probably is. I mean, that you can't just expect infinite terrain generation off of something like this. Whoa, okay, that got a little out of hand. Alright, let's throw this right there. Now, say I didn't want these decorations, though. What would I do with that? Doesn't seem like there's very much to be done about that. I guess you just have to keep playing with this until it sits the way you like. Wow, it really does decorate that very nicely. Okay, and it does actually occlude the lava, but it did put some grass on top, which is a little bit awkward. So now we could actually just test this level that we just made. Make up some kind of ridiculous solution, which probably wants some muscles on there, right? Because, you know, we haven't learned our lesson still. Uh, let's pivot this one that way. No, the other way. I just sort of wanted to see what those rocks did and everything. Uh, it looks like it's just going to bounce around and make life a little bit more complicated for us. So there we go. So you should pivot over that. And then I should be able to fling myself, hopefully, in the correct direction here. And I believe the goal is to not set your body down in the lava. Oh, okay, it's actually burning away my limbs, which is kind of sad. Oh, <laughs> now I just feel bad. All right, so that clearly didn't work out, but you do get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. Uh, and I think that's pretty cool. I don't think I'm going to probably save this level. It's not the best level, but that's all right. Um, We'll go back to our main screen here, and then there's a whole browser we can use to check out user-made content. I'm going to leave that for you guys to do. 
Uh, but I think we had a really good time here checking out Incredipede. I, I highly urge you guys to please go vote for this one on Greenlight. I will put all the links uh, right in the description for you, like I mentioned before. Uh, it just takes a couple seconds if you guys are already signed up for Steam and everything, which at this point, I would hope you are. Um, I would love to see this game get distributed on a very large platform like that. It definitely deserves the attention. At least in my opinion. Hopefully you guys agree. Uh, but if you don't, you know, feel free to, to let me know whatever your opinions are in the comments. I can't imagine you could have too bad of an opinion on this game. It seems very well done. Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode of Indie Impressions. As always, make sure you head on over to the website, www.indie-impressions.com, where you can check out all the old episodes sorted by genre, distribution method, and all that good stuff. You can actually browse through all the games I've covered that are on Greenlight just by clicking a button if you go to the, the menu where it says Indie Impressions. You'll see it when you get there anyway. Aside from the website, we've also got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash indieimpressions. Leave a like over there, and you'll get every day's uh, episodes delivered right into your Facebook stream or feed, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's very convenient, that way I can come to you instead of you having to come to me. Whatever you like, I mean, there's all these different options for everybody since we all have our own ways of browsing this stuff. Uh, and lastly, if you'd like to leave me any comments, criticism, suggestions, questions, whatnot, uh, or if you'd just like to let me know a game that you'd like to see on the show, feel free to let me know at Rockley Smile, that's at Rockley Smile on Twitter, and then there's also at Indie Impressions on, or at Indie Impression with just an N at the end, no S. And if you follow that, you'll get a live update of every time I upload a video, so for your convenience. So thank you so much for watching, make sure you come back again tomorrow for another awesome indie game. I do these every single day, and I hope to see you back. So have a lovely night, and thanks so much for watching, guys. Later!